Hello everyone. Well, um, this is a continuation of uh, uh, of my last video, um, getting pushed out of my own church uh, for <clears throat> rejecting Mormonism and, ex and, and exposing Mormonism, uh, the idea itself. But oh man, do I have a lot of dear, good friends, Mormons, that come to my house, uh, not to hang out and just, but we in order to share the gospel with them um cool people but I'm after the theology and after their teaching that's what I'm after and I'm there to expose it and, and truly just show it that it is um pretty much the teachings of the antichrist so um but anyway I met with my pastor assistant pastor um he's also a teacher at a local seminary and this seminary is known nationwide it's a huge seminary and and uh, well, we met and I told him uh, what caused the riot in the classroom which is you know I took all my draft paper and everything and I exposed Mormonism their teachings the view of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit God and also salvation and so forth and and also I showed him the how nowadays that with what's transpiring in the election and in the nominees and all that, um, that <clears throat> that the media has become their main advocate and, and to paint them as Christians and so forth. And I showed newspaper clippings. See if I got them here. I can just show you a little glimpse of it one more time. There it is. Yes, there you go. There's one clip of newspaper. Sorry. Yes, Mormons are Christians. This is a local newspaper. Um, here's part of the newspaper that's mocking the 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 evangelicals now. At one time, when the race started, that we used to say that there are cults. And we wouldn't, you know. I guess it was 41 percent of evangelicals wouldn't vote. Now down is like now down it. Now it's down to 18 percent or something like that. But um, I showed that, and I showed how the devil's working now pretty good, and 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 I, you know, and stuff like that, and and then, and uh, his conclusion is he said that he doesn't have any problem with the lesson itself, but he told me that uh, I reminded him of Paul, the Apostle Paul, in Acts chapter nine, and he said. When Paul first was converted, he brought and he caused right in the church. And he's, he's talking about specifically, I want you to go look at it. Acts chapter 9, so I think starting off with verses 16, somewhere there down to 30. Um, so he's telling me that I'd remind him, but, but the Christians, and he's caused so much riot, he goes, and they had to let Paul go. They pushed him out and snuck him out. And he says, my favorite verse there, he said, is which is verse 30. Acts chapter 9, verse 30. And then the church enjoyed peace. So, what he's telling me is that when Paul left, they enjoyed peace because when Paul was there, because of Paul, that the church didn't have peace, was getting stirred up. And I was speechless for the first time. And I read, I just came home and read all the commentaries on that. And I read it context. And those people enjoyed peace because the same person that was chasing them all the way down there to Damascus. No longer he's chasing them. He does more than that. The Lord converts him. And they can't believe it. This is the same guy that killed Stephen. Now he's here to get us, but then when they seem converted and he's proclaiming that Jesus is the Son of God and he's the Messiah himself, and they are so empowered, they're watching the power of God on this monster. Now he's a monster for God. Right? On top of that, he's confronting the Judaizers right there, which is his teammates. They used to be his teammates. They're not they're not having it because he's they're watching him go in and out of the temple with the Christians, and he was their leader. Now they're arguing with him, and they can't argue with him anymore because they're being defeated because he knows the truth now. And 
once they sneak him out, what happens is not just the Paul, he's not persecuting them anymore, the Christians, he's on their team, but he also absorbs the heat from the Judaizers, and they're, they're after him. Once this happens, the Christians are at peace. They're not being chased by Paul anymore, nor his teammates. On top of that, Paul is speaking for their belief. He's speaking for the faith. And it says their biggest fear was the Lord. They feared the Lord because they saw this hideous monster turn into a saint. Now God is that much real to them. As far as I'm concerned, guys, it takes me two minutes to be lukewarm. i got to keep planting my feet in the Word. So... They become peaceful, the church becomes peaceful and it becomes prosperous because Paul has stopped persecuting them. Paul is converted now and on top of that he's taken the heat with him because the Judaizers want to kill him. They're chasing him down back to uh, Tarsus or, or some other city that where he's from. That's where he goes back to. And this pastor twists that verse to tell me that they didn't have peace because of Paul was there, because of his teaching. And somehow Paul's teaching was wrong or doesn't tell us anywhere in scripture that he caused restlessness in the church because of his teaching or what he brought to the table. He was too bold and he was too just new convert. It doesn't tell us anything like that. But this teacher tells me that I am that guy but once I leave the church that the church will have peace. That's how he somehow glued this whole thing together. So that was my meeting today, folks. Thank you very much. And praise the Lord. So I guess now what it seems like is I have to pray, pray, and pray what the Lord is wanting off me. Because remember, everything is anointed by God. Maybe He has a greater plan for me. And He has a great plan for you too, my brothers. Praise the Lord and keep the faith.